Hi guys, Dr. Evans here with another Lab Tips video. This one is on using a LabQuest and SpectroViz spectrometer to record a visible absorbance spectrum for a colored solution. So the idea here really is we want to understand how the colored component of a liquid solution responds to light. For different wavelengths of light, does the solution absorb that wavelength? Essentially, that's what's measured by absorbance spectroscopy. The device to do this is called a spectrometer, and the brand that we'll use is called SpectroViz. It's got a USB plug, which is different from a lot of the other LabQuest probes, so make sure you plug it into the USB port in the LabQuest rather than one of the digital probe ports. Once you plug that in, you'll see abs appear on the screen of the LabQuest. There it is. And you'll notice a light come on inside the SpectroViz. Um, this is the light source that's used to measure absorbance, essentially. Obtaining an absorbent spectrum is a two-step process. We have to first of all calibrate the spectrometer, and then second of all record the spectrum of the analyte of interest. To calibrate, go to Sensors, Calibrate, and choose the spectrometer instrument there. And it's going to prompt you with a certain amount of warm-up time once it comes up. If you've had the spectrometer plugged in for a while, you can skip this warm-up time. That just gives the lamp enough time to come up to, to its equilibrium temperature and reach its equilibrium brightness and all that good stuff. Once the warm-up's complete, we're going to start by calibrating with a blank of distilled water. All of the solutions we'll work with will be aqueous solutions when it comes to absorbent spectroscopy. And so what we want to do is essentially zero out the absorbent spectrum of water so that the spectrum we measure is only due to the solute, only due to the colored analyte in the solution of interest. Before I run this, this blank, this calibration run, I want to talk a little bit about this boxy looking piece of glassware that holds solutions for absorbent spectroscopy. It's called a cuvette, and there are some important things to notice about the way a cuvette is put together and how it goes into the spectrometer. So, for the one thing, if you look at the sides of the cuvette, you'll notice that some of the sides, two of the sides opposite each other, are kind of ribbed. They have these grooves on the side, and the other two sides are smooth and completely transparent, like so. You want to make sure this transparent side is facing the direction of the light beam. And the spectrometer makes it very easy to see the direction of the light beam. This little white arrow here and the white light here both indicate the path of the light source. The light source is going this way. So we want to place the cuvette in there so that the completely transparent side is within the path of the light beam. If you don't do this, you'll get wonky spectra because you're putting this grooved side which scatters the light in the path of the light beam. So place that in there. One thing you want to make sure of as well for both your calibration run and for your analyte runs is that the liquid level is above the top of the light beam. If you don't make sure of that, then again the top of the liquid surface is going to scatter the light and mess up your spectra. Once it's in there and you're sure that the cuvette's pointing in the right direction, hit finish calibration. The device will take a minute to record the spectrum and you can hit OK and the calibration is done automatically. So the LabQuest has stored the spectrum of water in our case and is going to subtract it automatically from any future spectra that we obtain. I have a solution here now of Powerade. Powerade is blue and so you can see the blue color there. Here's the clear side and so I'm going to put this in so that the clear side is in the path of the light beam, not the grooved side, the completely transparent side, like so. Once I've got this calibrated, all I have to do is hit play. And you can hit play either on the LabQuest scre screen itself or by pressing the physical play button right here. Either way, if you're in full spectrum mode, what you're going to see is on the x-axis a wavelength scale that runs from about 380 nanometers, that's in the violet region, up to about 900, which is out a little bit to the infrared. And on the y-axis, you're going to see an, an absorbent scale that runs from about 0 to about, in this case, 1.5. When you stop, the spectrum gets recorded, and the LabQuest automatically picks out a very special point on the spectrum. That's the point where the absorbance is at a maximum. And so you can see here that at this point, 
the absorbance is at a maximum, and it shows you both the absorbance at that point, which in this case is 0 0.452, and the wavelength where that occurred, 630.5 nanometers. It's important to record both of these in most cases. In a lot of cases, because light is related to energy and the wavelength of light is related to its energy, we're very interested in this wavelength. You'll hear it referred to as lambda max. The Greek letter lambda stands for wavelength, max for maximum absorbance, and it's a very important wavelength for absorbent spectroscopy. In some cases, knowing the absorbance value will also be important too, so it's worth noting that as well. four-ish, 0.460 there that we had before.